Howdy folks. When we left off, we were actually trying to get hello world output here. So you might be tempted to do something like this. System.out.println and then we're going to print a string and say hello there. So even though Solidity actually does look a lot like Java and JavaScript, um, what we need to do is we need to come up with a return statement in order to do this. So we can't just print out. There is no uh, output terminal here for the Ethereum virtual machine. So what we actually want to do is something like this. So we're going to say return. We're going to put in single quotes for a string. And I'll say, hello there, amigo, as our return statement. So the same quotes tells me it's a string. There is my hello world. Um, now we have an error here. So it's saying we want a function variable or a struct. So actually we have to wrap this inside of a function. Remember this is the contract structure and inside the contract we're going to have functions. So let's write um, a function and call it hello. And the function looks something like this. Let's put our return statement inside. So we have a function we're going to call hello, and we're going to return hello there, amigo. Now we have some error messages here, and it says no visibility. So for all of our functions, we need to put in our visibility. So this part may look familiar if you've done any Java before. So we're going to say public view and then we have to say what it returns like this and I'm looking to return a string so I'm going to put it in here like this and that's pretty much all we need I still have an error here and it says data location must be memory for return parameter uh, so anytime we want to return a string we have to say where we're going to keep the string and so I have to say that this is in memory so that looks okay. I still have a warning here, uh, and that has to do with the view keyword. It Remix is suggesting that we could also use the pure keyword, like this, pure. Um, but with view, I think this is still going to work. So that looks like a good contract there. We're going to return hello there, amigo. So we need to deploy our contract. So I'm in my deploy tab and let's click deploy and we have new output down here we have the tick box and we have the same sort of information the contract address who it came from so this 0xca35 that matches this address up here 0xca3 and then there's going to be a 5 in there that's truncated so when I look at my contract, this one was my first one that I deployed. That was the empty constructor. I can remove that from the list. This is the one I just deployed now with the hello function. And I can look at that function. And here it is. It says hello. And so you can click that. And now we can actually see some output. So it says the output is a string. Hello there, amigo. And down here I have a call to hello world in my terminal. And I can look it up, and then my decoded output here says, as a string, the output is, hello there, amigo. And so this is one of the great things about messing around using Remix, is that you can write up a function and call it after you've deployed the contract pretty much straight away. And I can call it again, and I get the same output. When I look at the output down here now, let's check in on our gas and see if anything has happened. So I had 261 down the end here, so let's call. Hello, there was the call again, and I still have 261 gas. Uh, so this is telling me that this transaction, reading a string out of memory, did not cost any gas. Let's just take this view out and replace it, like this warning says, with pure. It can be restricted to pure. So 
let's just replace that with pure and we see here that we have no warnings and that's okay. So let's have a look at what this pure does. So in the documentation, um, view functions pr promise not to modify the state. So this is important because if you do modify the state, the state updates get pushed out to all the nodes in the network. Uh, and this can be very expensive and time consuming um, and perhaps result in delays. Um, so whenever possible, you want to avoid writing to the state and also writing to the state is permanent. So the following statements are considered modifying the state. So writing variables, emitting events, creating new contracts, etc. But then it says here, not marked view or pure. So only if it's marked view or pure is it considered to not modify the state. So here we have a quick example. We're gonna return some math and it's just as a view keyword. So that's what we saw uh, before I changed it to pure. Uh, and then a note here that says constant used to be an alias. So in old contracts, you may see the keyword constant, uh, but now it should be changed to view. And then we get to pure and pure seems a little bit strange, but it is actually even more safe than view. And how do you how do you write that in the documentation? Well, you say that if it's pure, you promise not to read from or modify the state. Like, I absolutely promise, I swear, I'm not gonna do it. So that's what a pure is. And uh, there's some more specific cases here, which I won't get into at the moment. So in the next part, we are going to look at modifying this slightly and just have a look at the gas.